Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Welcome back for another episode of the Enlighten Up podcast, everyone. Thank you so much for all of your support and welcome to any of you who are new to the show. Today, I am flying solo and I'm going to deliver some information to you that I feel is so important as we head into eclipse season in a couple of weeks, as we head into springtime for those of us here in the Northern Hemisphere. This is all about really kind of re- setting a whole new paradigm because we are looking at the beginning of the astrological new year starting. We are looking at so many new things happening as we do when eclipses come into play. And when it comes to our ability to create, to have the life that we want, I want to perhaps offer a direction, uh, a way of looking at things that I think sometimes gets overlooked. And this was something that was shown to me in my very first plant medicine journey with mushrooms back in 2022, that I had no idea was affecting my ability to create, to manifest, to have more in my life in any capacity of what that might be, whether it was more love, more uh, connections, more money, more growth in my business, more whatever it was, more health. It was just really limiting my ability to receive. And we're going to talk about your ability to receive when it comes to creating anything that you would like and desire in this lifetime. And so I want you guys to think about the universe, this universe as this grand interplay of masculine and feminine forces, right? If there is an imbalance of the masculine and feminine, then it can be really difficult to bring things together in a very cohesive nature. Now, I'm not going to focus so much on the masculine energies today. I'm going to focus more on the feminine energies Now, the masculine energies are really about our ability to hold space, to create structure, to have discipline, to take action, to speak things outwardly. It's all of that outward doing energy. But before you can even get to that stage, you really have to first look at the feminine energy. And so The importance of the feminine energy, which is why I found myself focusing so much on it over the last two years, literally creating the womb of activation course and diving so deep into this goddess energy, like the goddess codes and how they interact with the universe and just understanding my own feminine nature, which for those of you who are newer to the podcast, don't maybe don't understand that my journey has predominantly been very masculine for the first 30 years of my life. So the last 16 years of my life or so have been more focused on understanding what does it mean to be feminine? Do I even love being a woman? Do I even like being a woman? And how does that dictate my ability to be in this world, to create, to have relationship, to have my health, all of those different things? And so Understanding that the feminine energy is about intuitive natures, about receptivity. And let's just talk about receptivity for a second, because receptivity is the essence of the feminine energy, right? The feminine energy is about receiving, 
The masculine energy is about giving. All right. So if we know that the feminine energy, the main governing principle is the receptivity principle, and the energy is about receiving as the womb literally receives a life force to create a being into this, into this world, then we need to also look at what else governs the feminine energy. Well, we know that the masculine energy is all about the mind thinking, the mental processes, then the feminine energy is all about feeling. And so when we understand that the governing principle of the feminine energy is receptivity and that it is correlated to our ability to feel, we understand how important our feelings are in being able to receive more. Okay. Now, this is where things get really interesting because if you are an empath, if you are a highly sensitive person, it can be very difficult to open yourself up to feeling more because you feel so much. You literally feel like the whispers of wind when it comes to people's energy force being around you. You can literally for the if, like literally hear a pin drop but just translate that into feeling energy okay you can literally feel that and so it becomes important to understand the dynamics of what it means to be an empath what it means to be a highly sensitive person and how that impacts your ability to create more abundance in your life in whatever capacity that is. Now I want you to think about the tarot cards. The Empress card is the feminine archetype of the tarot deck. She is uh, depicted as literally a pregnant woman most of the time. And that is because she represents being full, being fertile, being abundant. All right. And so it is in our nature to be curvy, to be round, to be full, to be fertile. However, when we are so sensitive to the emotional field around us, it can cause us to constrict. It can cause us to want to shrink. It can cause us to want to shut everything down. And if you guys can hear the barking dogs next door, I apologize. <laughs> I don't know if it's picking it up or not, but I just want to apologize. Um, they agree with me, I think. That's what I'm going to say. But there is so much importance in understanding the nature of the feminine energy and how that relates to being an empath. And this goes for all my men out there, okay? Because we all have the feminine and masculine principles within our body, within our energy field. And we all have the ability to be abundant. Uh, now, when it comes to being an empath, what I was shown in my medicine journey was that I really wanted to know what the greatest version of myself look like, needed to do, needed to be, needed everything about the greatest version of myself, what that blueprint entailed. And I needed to know what was blocking me. And as many of you know, uh, that a lot of it was found through generational trauma, which I want to say for any of you who are interested in exploring the invisible walls that are holding you back that could potentially be tied to generational trauma or childhood trauma. I am just closing out the first program uh, with everyone who signed up in January. I'm actually holding a masterclass on Wednesday, March 6th, the day after this airs, uh, for new people who weren't able to get to that first masterclass because I am getting ready to launch a new program. Now you can attend the masterclass and receive all of the wisdom. You're going to get some worksheets. You're going to get meditation. You're going to get a lot of information that will help you on your own journey. But if this is something that you're looking towards really going deep into your healing journey, really wanting to be successful in executing the healing that you've been looking for uh, and removing that wall that is just holding you back 
I highly suggest that you either sign up for the masterclass or reach out to me, Nicole at NicoleFrolic.com and let me know that you're interested in joining the next program because I'm starting that on March 19th. Okay. And as soon as it's full, I'm closing it down and I'm only going to be opening it to 10 people this time. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for all of you who might be interested. But when we look at this idea of what holds us back, I was literally feeling like no matter what I did, no matter how many techniques I incorporated or executed in my meditation practice, in my, uh, just in my, my being human being practice of like what I needed to do in this physical reality, my healing, it just seemed like Nothing was really working until I understood this concept because this concept shifted so much in tandem with the generational trauma uh, that I had to heal. And it happened when I was sitting at the river. And I, of course, was about three hours into my journey, which means I was just coming out of the peak sensitivity. But my eyes were so open, like, my acuity to see things, it was such high definition. My hearing was literally like probably stronger than most dogs hearing. And I was able to literally feel things around me so intensely. And so when I sat at the river, just to remind you guys, that river was flowing heavily from all the melting snow off the caps of the Rocky Mountains. And it was rushing past me and I could see all of the little bubbles, all of the little current movements of the water in such high definition. It's like I had three microscopes in front of my lenses of my eyes or something. I could hear the rush of the water rushing past me. The coolness of the water on my, my skin was all amplifying everything around me to the point where I started to get a little overwhelmed. Actually, I got really overwhelmed. I got so overwhelmed that I thought to myself, Nicole, maybe you shouldn't be out here. Maybe it's time to go back to your little cave that you created um, where you've got your blankets and your towels and your pillows and, and all of that, that, you know, you can just kind of curl back under and be safe and be um, buffered. Okay. My little buffer zone from all of this high intense energy that I was um, picking up on. And in that moment that I was contemplating leaving the rock that I was sitting on in the middle of this river, I heard the water speak to me and adamantly ask me not to leave. The water spoke to me and said, we need you to learn how to feel more than you've ever felt before so that you can be in a place to receive more than you've ever received before. And in that moment, it was like little clockwork puzzle pieces clicking in together one after the other as everything became understood in a flash, in an instant, that every time I got overwhelmed or it felt like it was too much, I needed to shut everything down around me, within me, so that I could just calm my nervous system down, calm my body down, go back to a state that felt more comfortable. And I realized I needed to learn how to go to the gym for feelings, okay? And I am so used to going to the gym four, five, six, sometimes even seven times a week. Okay. I, I am known to work out twice a week, um, every day of the week, which I don't advocate for. I'm not saying that that's something you should do, but I, you know, I am so used to training my body to do more than it's ever done before, you know, to keep it physically fit and to give it constant resistance so it can get used to being stronger. And I'm like, why don't I do that for my feelings? I know I'm highly empathic. I know I'm highly intuitive. I know I've been opening my heart so much more. I mean, I just had come off an ayahuasca ceremony a week prior to this, and that was all about opening my heart. And that's been another journey that I've been on is just opening up that magnetic field. Now, 
let's talk about the heart for a second before we get back to the feelings, Jim, that all of us need to be working out at as an empath or an intuitive. The heart, when whatever you're feeling, okay, in your emotional field, whatever you're putting out there, you become a magnet to that is out in the quantum field. And your heart is able to magnetize things towards you. But if your heart is what we open to feel more, and of course, our feelings are located in our gut, okay, the the sacral chakra is responsible literally for our feelings, okay, the the root chakra is responsible for our beingness, for our body, for our safety, for our physicality, for like our immediate needs. The sacral chakra is responsible for all of our ability to feel. Okay, so the heart and the sacral chakra are important when you're learning how to attract, to build, to create in this world. But if you're shutting your heart down, and saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to feel that. I only want to feel this. It doesn't work that way. You need to be open to everything. You don't get to just pick and choose. Now, you can learn how to master what you're feeling and how to learn to um, be in harmony with certain feelings where they don't necessarily impact you the way they would someone else who doesn't know how to navigate the field of emotions. So our heart needs to be open. When we're saying no to something, no to feeling, we're saying no to receiving. The heart shuts down, the gut shuts down, and now all of a sudden it's almost like imagine you are this uh incredibly high technology machine, okay? Because as a human being, you literally are like a very high tech machine. And all of a sudden you're operating at like, maybe you're operating at 80, 90% capacity and uh, everything's revving, everything's going, the lights are flashing, everything's good. And then you're like, ooh, this is a bit too much. This is a bit too much. Everything's shut down. And all of a sudden you go down to 30% just to recalibrate, just to give yourself a break, which again, I'm going to say every one of us needs a break here and there, but you need to learn how to train yourself so that when you get up here, you don't have to drop back down here. You have to train yourself to go up here and then drop down a little and then train yourself to go up higher and then you drop down a little. And so our ability to grow is never about this high fluctuation. It's about learning how to increase the level of your low so that it starts to meet you at a higher level so you don't have to drop so much. And so learning how to train your ability to feel more is crucial to your ability to receive more. Until you master your sensitivity, okay, which is a gift and a challenge, all right? Which is normal. We live in duality. Everything has a polarity. And so, yes, if you are a highly sensitive person, if you are an empath, you have a gorgeous gift to work with in this reality. But you also have a challenge. And that's part of the lesson. That's part of the teaching that we are here to embrace. And so I had to learn how to navigate this overwhelming feeling, the fear that would start to come in, the anxiety that would start to kick up like a dust storm, okay, in my field when I was trying to start bringing in more. Because I'll tell you, what happens when you start to receive more than you're used to? It most certainly gets overwhelming. And I started after get having this uh, understanding come through in my journey Every time in my very uh, existence, you know, in my day to day, I was paying attention. And I can't tell you how often in my day to day, I would catch myself being like, oh, like that's maybe a little bit too much. We, we don't want that. Oh, like, let's just tone it down a little. Oh, remove yourself from here. Oh, go over there. Oh, maybe just like, um, turn on some music and do that instead. Like there was 
every time I was challenging myself to have more in whatever way it was, which meant I was stepping outside of my comfort zone, it really became counterproductive because I was constantly going in this up and down, oscillating like high and low thing where I wasn't learning how to train to go in gradual up and downs. So I had to train myself to learn how to feel more and not be overwhelmed. And so it literally becomes like a gym exercise for your feelings. And Mother Ayahuasca helped me even deepen this practice uh, just a few months ago in December when she showed me how to navigate being at the top of my career, how to navigate having that kind of success. Because when we think about success, whether it's success in your business, success in your career, success in your relationship, success in your health, we think that it's just easy. Like once you're there, it's probably perfect. It it's it's very um, you know less challenging is what I want to say. It's less challenging, right? That's that's the concept that we have in our mind. That's how we're programmed to think. But no, if you're not used to being there it comes with a lot more challenges than you think. And so, yes, you're opening the door to a lot more, but can you handle that? Are you actually ready to receive it? And so this is something that we have to constantly be asking ourselves and be in conscious awareness of, of how we are showing up to the new abundance that is coming our way. Because as soon as new abundance comes your way and your instant reaction is, oh, hold on, not just yet. Uh, Let me just recalibrate. Let me just go have a break for a second. (laughs) The universe is like, oh, you're not ready. You're not ready for this. And so you get a timeout. And all of a sudden, it goes away. All of a sudden you started to feel that flow. All of a sudden you start to feel the bliss. You're like, yes, everything's happening. It's effortless. Like it's easy. And then boom, it shuts down. You don't know why. Well, I'll tell you why you shut it down. I shut it down. We all shut it down whenever we start to feel too much. And so I really want you guys to consider where in your life in any area that is of maybe more importance to you right now than other areas, when you're trying to improve that area so that you can have more abundance, okay, when you start to receive it, are you unconsciously saying no, because it's becoming too much? And Even just understanding that wording, that thought process, that belief of, ooh, it feels too much. Well, if it feels too much, then you can't receive too much. Remember, feelings are directly correlated to the receptivity principle of the feminine energy. And you can't work with that energy if you're not receiving it. And so learning how to become a strong, badass warrior empath is so important on your ability to have the life that you desire, but you haven't really fully created yet. Whatever it is that you're trying to reach, there's always going to be new levels. There's always going to be new goals. Okay. Because the whole name of the game down here on earth is growth, right? And it's experience, new experience. And it doesn't mean that you can't have fun with all of that because I certainly think you should be having fun with all of that. But it's not about not being happy with what you finally get. It's about knowing that we're constantly here to have new experiences, to, ha- to learn what it means to be in a, a state of more. And in that state of more, it can represent anything to you. Because when we look at the universe and how it operates, it's constantly growing. It's, ne- it's not um, sh- shrinking itself 
except for in brief moments to then really expand. And that's why I want to say, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. It doesn't mean that you never get the opportunity for rest because rest is a feminine energy. Okay. It doesn't mean you don't get that moment to just go inside and have that silence and have that peace for yourself. That is crucial. But how do you in your everyday life increase your ability to feel more on a day to day? So that when you do go into that silence, you can actually go even deeper because your ability to increase how much you are able to receive increases your ability to receive from the silent place of the empty vastness of the the womb of creation, the cosmic womb of nothingness. And that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so learning how to embrace feeling more is an important journey that many of us intuitives and highly sensitive people need to go on. If you want to increase your capacity to be more psychic, to have more vision, more clear audience, well, guess what? You need to increase your ability to receive, to be more open. But if you're saying no to certain feelings, which again, feelings sit in the gut. Where is our intuition? Our intuition is literally in our gut. Okay. Your intuition is a little different than your heart. Your heart can amplify your intuition. Your heart is, is, is a little bit different than your intuition. Okay. And so really paying attention to your ability to feel the full human spectrum of existence means This is why we have a dark night of the soul. This is why we do our work to go into the darkness of our own selves and learn to get comfortable and learn to look it in the face and learn to love it, to embrace it, to understand it, to recognize its power, which is something that all of you who are in the Forbidden Journey Blueprint program right now, this is something we dove really deep into. And now that you're in your rebirth phase, you're starting to understand how important that power is. And you're starting to understand what power truly feels like when you embrace it. Power isn't about being used against others. You can have your own power and use it in accordance with your own morals and ethics and values. Going into your own darkness is so important to embrace. Because as you allow yourself to face the deeper spheres, you allow yourself to experience the biggest hopes. As you allow yourself to go into your greatest sadness, you allow yourself to experience an even greater joy. If you're not willing to feel one, you won't feel the other. And you'll find yourself oscillating within a very short spectrum of possibility, which is why so many people start to feel dead inside in their life. It's why so many people start to feel like they've lost the meaning of why they're even here. They've lost their passion. They don't have any drive for whatever it is that makes them happy in life. In fact, They've even forgotten what actually even makes them happy. You need to be willing to feel the full spectrum of the human existence in your feelings. The more willing you're able to feel one, you have to be willing to feel the other. And when you're in alignment and in accordance with that, that is when the magic really happens. Because as soon as you are able to get comfortable with that extreme of the darkness that so many people run away from, You are now comfortable to receive from the place that so many people don't allow themselves to receive from. And so learning to get really comfortable with your feelings and master your emotions in increasing your sensitivity to all things, knowing how to navigate them. So going back to my ayahuasca journey, where mother ayahuasca literally taunted me, taunted me through a fun house of experiences of like where I literally felt sick to my stomach and she kept taunting me. She's like, Oh, can you not stomach it? 
Can you not stomach it? Now let me just, let's just focus on that phrase that she used with me. Stomach it, intuition, gut, feelings. She taught me how to feel it. So when we say, can you stomach it? It's like, can you feel it? Can you hold it? Can you embrace it? Can you allow it to keep moving through you? And I could have purged. She would have, she would have like, well, I can just purge this for you if you want. I was like, no, no, I, I know that if I purge it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I wasn't going to judge myself for it, but I knew that if I wasn't willing to learn how to feel it, I was minimizing my ability in this reality right now to go further than I've ever gone in my business. And she eventually showed me you are exactly where you already need to be. You just need to embrace it. You need to feel it. You need to start acting like it. And I can't act like it and I'm not knowing how to hold space for it in the feelings. And so, yes, for instance, if you're ever trying to grow your business, a lot more responsibility comes with growing your business, which means a lot more stress comes with growing your business. Yes, you're open to a lot more um, beautiful things. Like you're open to expansion. You're open to having a team and working with a team. You're open to more clients. You're open to newer opportunities, bigger opportunities, you know, things that could really open your world, but you're also open to the other stuff. But that is part and parcel with the human experience of duality. It's knowing that you need to be able to handle both. And so breath work was the grounding element of my journey with ayahuasca and learning how to master my own feelings. Your breath is one of your most powerful alchemical teachers in this reality. Your breath doesn't just ground you. Your, gr your breath expands you. Your breath moves you. Your breath creates space for allowance of more. And so I kept using my breath to increase my capacity to hold more, more feeling, more abundance. Yes, and more stress was with that. But learning how to manage it, now it's like I can handle more. And now that opens me up to other things on the positive spectrum, so to speak. And so it's so important for you guys to understand of allowing yourself to feel the full human experience, the full spectrum of this existence, of what it means to be in the dark and the light, to be sad and happy, to be in total fear and in total faith, total hope. You know, there is a reason for all of it. And learning how to master it will make it easier for you so that you don't have to drop so low that it takes so much effort to get back up to where you were before. In fact, because you don't drop so low, you get to go higher the next time. So let me just see here. When we think about this idea of the ocean, now, this is another cool thing that I'm actually um, opening people up to in their final phase of the Forbidden Journey Blueprint um, this week, where in this, in this um, soul metamorphosis that I feel like I've been going through over the last couple of years, one of the integrations has been the whale for me. The whale, which I believe was a past life for me, is also a spirit guide of mine, needed to be integrated into this body of existence, into this reality, into this timeline, in this lifetime, in order for me to access certain gifts, knowledge that I already had had known, awaken it, uh, the dormancy that's already held within my DNA, to facilitate certain things in my business, my coaching, my healing practices, all of it. And it's this idea of the whale is such a large mammal, right? It's one of the biggest mammals here on earth. And I was shown to embody it 
because I needed to stop playing small. They're like, stop acting like a small fish in a pond or even a lake. Start becoming the whale in the ocean of the world. You have that capacity to operate at that level. And so I knew that bringing in the whale for a variety of other reasons, but this was one of the reasons. And so when we think about the ocean, which when we can save in our feelings, the ocean represents our feelings. That's why we call it the ocean of emotion. The bigger, the more vast you create your own ocean, right? The more you have the ability to explore, the more there is for you to swim to, to interact with. And so allowing yourself to not be this chalice, okay, for instance, that gets so full that it overflows and you start losing maybe some of your uh, life force, you start losing some of your abundance. No, you are in a vast ocean that almost is like this constantly expanding its own universe. It's a, it's a universe of its own right that keeps building out and building out and building out and flowing out and flowing out and then more currents coming in towards you. Kind of use that metaphor to understand your ability to become more. I used to think of myself when I needed to, mm, I wanted to feel stronger. I use this more in a protection um, way of capacity to if I felt like there were energies around me that I didn't want or that were maybe trying to intimidate me, I would start to build up my energy to the size of a house. Well, the house is too small now. (laughs) And so it's about just going full on expansiveness. And so um, I'm going to cap it there because I don't really want to make this podcast too long for you guys. It's a short and sweet one, but it's a powerful one. It's a potent one. And it's important to understand that we are in this reality to explore all of us, explore everything you're capable of. And if you are that highly sensitive and highly intuitive person, one of your challenges and your gifts is that ability to feel more. So you've got to learn how to master. You've got to create your own gym workout for your own feelings every day of how you're going to, every time you feel that fear, every time you feel that anxiety come in, okay, whatever it might be that causes you to shut things down, breathe through it. Say, okay, let me just see what it feels like to feel this for five minutes longer than I would normally allow myself to feel it. That's what I did. I was like, let me just feel this a little longer. Let me see how far I can go before it's like really overwhelming me. I mean, that's how I work out. If I'm trying to run, I'll run just a little bit faster so I can shave off a couple of seconds off my run, or I'll lift a little bit more weight. I'm not going to like pile it all on and then cause myself to be in pain and likely tear muscles. No, like just start building it up slowly. Okay. And learn how to become a master because you don't want your own empathy to master you, you need to be the master of it in order for you to create the life you want. I want to remind you guys that the Forbidden Journey Retreat is less than two months away. And um, I have a couple people that have reached out. And so the rooms are closing up. If you are interested in coming to the retreat, I highly suggest you fill out the form and reach out to me with at least a deposit to secure your spot. That's all you need is a deposit. The full payment doesn't need to be in until April 15th. So if you're interested in coming, if you feel called to have one of the greatest soul metamorphoses of your life, to break through a wall that has been holding you back that you just can't seem to penetrate. I promise you, Christine and I are going to be creating such a magical space for you guys to have a healing that defies everything you even knew was possible for you. This Forbidden Journey retreat is one of my greatest, uh, I don't even know what to call it. Um, I just want to call it a creation right now uh, in that it allows me to work in person with people. As much as I love working online with everyone because it allows me to reach people all around the world and go global, I love being able to work in the intimate space with you one-on-one. And there's something so powerful about the space that is being created between myself and Christina and every person that shows up and surrenders. 
And so if you're willing to experience something far beyond anything you've ever experienced before, I'm going to leave a link for you guys to sign up and fill out the form at the bottom of the uh, retreat page. Uh, Also, if you're interested in um, maybe going a little slower, or maybe it's because you want to prep for the retreat, because I know people have done that as well. uh, The next Forbidden Journey Blueprint Coaching Program, it's an eight-week online group coaching program, is going to recommence a new group on March 19th. I am holding the free masterclass tomorrow, um, March 6th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to sign up, I'll leave a link for that. Um, If you can't make it, you'll get the replay. If you've already been, it's just the same masterclass, so there's no need to sign up to that one. But if you're interested in joining the program this time around, uh, I will leave all of the details below as well. All right, because I'm only going to be taking the first 10 people this time. So with all that being said, I want to know, what are you ready to create? We're going into eclipse season, which means we're letting go of things we do not need. And we're opening ourselves up to the magic of possibility. We're opening ourselves up to what destiny calls forth for us. And it's time to really embrace newer versions of ourself that are more expansive, that are more open, that are willing to hold space for a better destiny, a greater destiny, more powerful destiny that allows you to hit a higher timeline than where you are right now. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for your support on this podcast. If you haven't already, please leave me a review. If you like this episode, please share it with a family member, friend, whoever you think this would resonate with or be helpful to. I appreciate your support so much. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, drop me a comment below. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. It means so much to me. And I'll see you all very soon. Thanks again for joining me for another show on the Enlighten Up podcast. I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all. Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and YouTube. Keep your light bright and I'll see you next week.